heavy lot. how heavy your character is. Oh, okay. You can do sans equipment, or you can uh, you can like average equipment. Yeah. Uh, you said passive perception. Yeah. And uh, our weight. You know, it's really rude to ask yeah. a woman for her weight, Will. Or a leprechaun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a leprechaun. But, uh, what are you? Uh, you're a gnome or a halfling? I'm a dwarf. Oh, you're a dwarf? So it's even more rude. Yeah, so. Uh, but you're dwarf scum, so I can. Hundred ninety total. Mm -hmm. be uh, I'd like that in stones, please. Uh, would it be? I always see those occasional posts where people, because that's England, right? They use stone. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if it's like how common it is, though. Yeah. But I always see like those. Sometimes I see like the intermittent fasting subreddit, and they're like, "I lost four stone." I'm like, I don't know what that means. Um, uh, I don't know, it's like 20 pounds. Mine yeah. is 11. 11 and seven. weight, uh, the passive perception. Okay, and weight is 76. Oh no, sorry, I'm looking at all that. Okay, so you two, okay. So uh, John. Hello everybody, I'm Ian Gibson, it's Sunday. Yet another time for a D&D session. Quite frankly, this is gonna be the last session in our Waterdeep Dragon Heist campaign. Now, don't get worried, that doesn't mean no more D&D forever. It just means we're nearing the end of this story arc. Joining us as always, Josh, how's it going? Doing good. Great, 
Uh, Karen, how's it going? It's going well. You know, it's a nice, uh, chilly Sunday. Great to stay indoors and play some D&D. Perfect. Perfect. And Will, how's it going? Uh, you know, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Great. Great. Um, you know, let's just, let's do a quick recap. Last session, uh, we were tracking down the, uh, terrorist, I'm sorry, the Fuhrerist, uh, Nimble Right. We tracked him across the city through some Zentarum dead in a butcher shop. We got, uh, a metal lobster vehicle from a side character that was weirdly fleshed out and just, uh, I assume we died immediately after we left her. Uh, we got ambushed. We had a nice chase through the streets and, uh, we left it. Just kind of, um, what were they called? Kerbals? Kobolds? Kenku. Kenku. With some Kenkus stealing from us and disappearing through a doorway. You know, uh, quite frankly, um, let's just, let's, 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 let's just do it, boys. Let's just do it, boys. Let's just do so, it. <clears throat> so, yes, um, the little street urchin stole the stone and then the, um, Kenku grabbed the kid through the door and then slammed the door closed. You guys are right outside of the old tower. Let me just switch over okay. to this scene. Um, Karen, if you would like to join yes. the Foundry Virtual Tabletop whenever, you can do that. No, I'm you good. Have, you have the power. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just use your imagination. <laughs> uh, I gotta find the link. I actually thought, um, while well, Karen joins, for a while of like extending this monitor's display to your room so you could see everything, but then I realized you would see all the DM, the DM stuff, so I quickly dashed right. that entire thought process. Okay, man. She's in, everybody. Okay, so you guys are right outside the door. Um, it is an old, decrepit tower. Um, like I said, you saw a um, little street urchin kid went up to the door, turned around to like, na 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 to you guys, and then a feathered hand came out and grabbed him and slammed the door closed. Mm. So... Hmm. Okay, I just want to take a little. Uh, I'm assuming we're all going to take a little bit of a breather, real quick. You know, because we've been running. Um. <laughs> okay. Actually, you know what? I, what I'm checking is my. Maybe we should just, you know, in character, go over how we're feeling real quick. I'm gonna be like, okay, I haven't taken any hits yet, but I, I have gotten rid of some spells. But I, I think I'm ready for another fight. How about you? Daldar is always prepared. Yeah, I need to catch my breath a little bit, but I think I'll be okay. Perfect. Well, folks, what do you think the plan is? Should we just barge in there? Should we try and sneaky speaky a little bit? Let's uh, maybe scope the area around, see if, you know, we can get a, a couple of clues as to who we're, who we're dealing with here. Aye. I'll be honest, I don't think that kid has much time. Hmm. I think he knew exactly where he was going. But he was... But he no. was grabbed. Aye, there is Was a... it a Kenku that grabbed him? Yeah, Kenku. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to waste too much time with the uh, the Kenku dragging that kid off somewhere. Mm. Yeah, you know, I perhaps this is a bit of a sneaky peeky and a burst of the door moment. Uh, uh, DM, can you uh, describe a little bit what this building is that we're in front of? Yes, it is an old decrepit tower. Okay. Um, it's kind of just like, it's almost like a windmill, just no windmill part of it. It's like the structure of a windmill, like okay. literally just a like an old tower that uh, someone um, probably lived in. How many doors are there? At least there's one, one entrance door that you guys are outside of. There's a tiny little peephole on it and it's got a closed, like there's a peephole on your side, but you can tell it's closed. Um, and there's nothing, it's just like shingles on the outside. Okay, can you check your mic real quick? You're you're clipping a whole lot. Maybe just move I'm it away. Clipping from a you. whole lot? Yeah. Let me check. Oh, I don't hear anything. Sounded a bit loud for me, but I haven't heard any clipping. Is this better? Yeah, it's a little better. Okay, I'll just keep it farther away from me. 
Um, I think I moved it because I was reading the book. Okay, so I think... Um, oh, folks, it looks like there's only one door that's the way in. Maybe we just uh, burst it down, get popping? What do you think, Lazary? <sighs> you know, we might as well just go for it. Aye. Um, and I turn around and I open the door. The door opens into a small outer room uh, foyer. There's rotting tapestries adorning the walls, and there's mud and dirt on the floor. Hmm. Well, we've got another door here. You know, I was thinking maybe we should prepare ourselves before we open this door. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Daladar, you look over and Daladar already has his, his sword uh, drawn. Aye. I'll open the door again. Lazari, perhaps you have a spell ready or something? Anything to throw? Um, yeah, I can... What is this? Yeah, I can prepare some uh, some frostbite to freeze them. Aye. Okay, I open the door. Uh, the door opens into a small spiral room. Uh, there's spiral stairs in the center. There's an old fireplace. Uh, it is very dusty and old. There's fresh prints of Bel Air that are uh, going up the stairs. No enemies? No enemies. Damn it, where yeah. are you? Come on out, I want to fight. Is that coming from above? That's coming from above, and it's the chi voice of a child. Mm -hmm. Just sprint after it. Yeah. Start sprinting. Start sprinting. You guys are sprinting up the stairs? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your combined weight. No, I'm kidding. Um, okay, let me move you guys upstairs. Uh, so as you come upstairs, you see a Kenku holding a the small child um just holding them you know with like a knife to his throat and being mm -hmm. like uh and the help like help is coming from the kenku not the kid the kid's mouth is covered oh um don't worry I know, I know how to solve this problem if it's will cast a fireball <laughs> It's uh, a it's Will's hostage negotiation go-to. <laughs> um, I say... Do you I remember say, that? <laughs> oh, yes, I do now. All right, I say, let the child go, and we'll spare your life. Um, it... Uh... It mimics uh, just the more crying for help sound. All right, I've raised my crossbow and I pointed it at its head and I want to roll intimidation and say the same you... thing again. Okay, roll that intimidation. That is a 21. Boom. So it, its eyes kind of widen. Um and it opens its mouth and makes the sounds of coins clinking together in like a coin purse. While he's um, talking to it, can I kind of try to roll stealth to just inch closer and closer? Um, yeah. Lazary, would you like to do anything? Um. Damn. Damn. Not to nat 20 <laughs> for 27. Hey. Without it noticing, you're just face to face with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I was. It's so, I replace its knife with a banana. Yeah, I'll say without noticing, you have like, you have opportunity on it. Okay. Like I'll... it's it's focused on Bofus and Lazary and didn't really notice you. Mm -hmm. I'll just hold an action to try to grab it if it attempts any harm to the child, but I'll wait. Okay. And I and I say to it, your payment isn't in coin. It's in keeping your life. 
Uh, okay, so it opens its mouth again, and then uh, cries help uh, like the like a child again, and like kind of holds the knife closer to the kid's throat. I shoot. I grab. Okay, so roll a shoot and roll a strength check. 13 Josh, to hit. with advantage. Okay. 13 to hit. Let me... What was Are that, you... 16? Did you say I get uh, advantage or just, or just Josh? Josh? Josh gets advantage. Gotcha. Okay, so... Um, Lazar, in a blink of an eye, you see the Kenku falling backwards with an arrow in its head, or a bolt in its head, and also Daladar holding the kid and the knife clattering to the floor. Hell yeah, boys. Oh, wow. And the kid kind of wriggles free from you, Daladar, and drops... Don't let him go. Oh, yeah. Oh, you don't, uh, until, you don't until, he drops the, in, until he actually drops the, the thing. Yeah, so this, you see something drop out of his hand mm -hmm. onto the floor, and he's trying to, like, wriggle free from you. Uh, what's the item on the floor? It looks to be some sort of stone. Uh, can yeah, I, pick can, that up. And, so. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, if you're, if you're still struggling with the kid, then I can go pick it up. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you pick it up, and you uh, think this is the stone of galore. I got the stone, guys. Heck yeah. Let this kid go. Right, beat it, go. kid. Yeah, kid. I'll beat release it. him. Okay, kid runs down the stairs. Out of here. You're welcome. Bing, <laughs> bing, Sir, hmm. we know I shoot the kid. <laughs> um, Murder all his friends. I don't... I just want to do a quick, like, search around just to see if this was a place that the Kenku run ran into or if this was, like, a hideout that he knew of. Um, oh, yeah. So, uh, everything is very, very dusty. Mm -hmm. Um, it looks like it just happened to run into this building. And, okay. yeah. So, you do find a, um, a wand of magic missiles, though. Heck yeah. With a 50% charge. Okay, I'm taking that. Nice. Uh, in the, this room, there's arrow slits around. And then, um, yeah, that's about it. it everything's pretty um, destroyed. Broken glass, scraps of paper, all sorts of stuff. Pigeons' nests. And the lot. Well, folks... We have the Stone of Galore, and we can go after the treasure, but there's still people after us because if they think we have the stone. What are we doing well, now? We do have it now. <laughs> yeah, at least they have a reason. True. True enough. Okay, what do you guys want to do? You head back Troll Skull Alley, try to maybe work work with this Stone of Galore. Um, At this point, might as well head back to Trollskull mm -hmm. Alley and fill everyone in. Yeah, and, and take a rest, and then we head tomorrow with the, the galore. Because we've okay. had a long day. I, I mm -hmm. feel like, wasn't the last two sessions the same day? Yes, I think wow. so. <laughs> I want to sleep. Okay, so you guys head back to Trollskull Manor. Um. Yeah, so you're back. Uh, Raynar's there saying, "Hey, welcome back, guys. You've been you've been gone all day. Kind of reorganized the place since the uh, fireball explosion, but uh, everything's kind of looking good. Uh, we made some incredible sales today. Yes, we've had a long day, but uh, if we could get some ale, some food, and some sleep, I think we'll be ready for the adventure tomorrow." Perfect. So he pours you out some ales, and you guys hang out and grab those. Uh, any precautionary measures around the house? Anything like that? Excuse me. Um, I yeah. mean, you have you have the stone, and 
Uh, uh, maybe we, no, you're looking for it. Maybe oh. we go put it in the basement, hide it in one of the kegs. Okay. And does anyone want to try to study it or attune to it or die a horrific death? Not particularly. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend the night in like, because I only need four hours of meditation or sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend most of the night up on the balcony just keeping watch. Okay, perfect. On the second floor, I think. Gotcha. Okay, so you guys all sleep for the night. Nice long rest. Uh, the next morning, uh, nothing happened through the night. No one broke in or anything. Um, so yeah, so next morning, what are you? What are y'all doing? Um, I think I think we're all going to kind of gather after breakfast, and probably have the mm -hmm. stone of galore with us and say, "All right, folks, this leads us to the treasure, but we've got to figure out how." Any ideas? Does uh, Raynar have any ideas? Um, are you asking Raynar? Yeah, we'll bring him into or, this conversation. Or Roltek, if he if he oh, had yeah. any sort of detect magic type thing, or like magical in inquisitiveness. Yeah, he can detect magic on things, but that it, I, he can't identify is the problem. Okay. But he might be able to like study it at least. <clears throat> um, so Raynar, you guys kind of ask him about it. You show him the stone. He's like, "Oh man, the stone of Galore." Do you know what this is? It's a, the stone of Galore. I think it's a Galoria stone, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, you would think that you would, but it's actually a uh, aboleth named Galore who transformed itself into a stone. What's an aboleth? It's Something that the book says that Will doesn't know. Mm. I don't actually know what an aboleth is. Yeah, let me Google it. Aboleth. It's not a place. Oh, it's like a gross thing. Fish like amphibians of immense size, often reaching 20 feet in length and weighing up to 6,500 pounds. Um, so he'll say, I only know that my father would regularly attune to this, uh, to, sorry, to feed it, uh, his thoughts. If it, uh, I, I'll say it's almost like, uh, what is it in Harry Potter? The pensieve where you like put your thoughts out into something else. Oh, into yeah. the ball. Like it's like a storage device. And so Raynar hey. says he must have stored the location of the vault in here hey. instead of in his own mind uh, how do we pull that memory out uh you're gonna have to try to attune to it how do you attune to it uh you like kind of sit there and meditate with it for a bit Is okay I'll... risk involved i don't know that i mean that thing's alive it could probably do anything to you it could drain your brain dry i'm not scared of it give it here i'll attune to it yeah, you do it, Bofus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you do it, Bofus. Wait, did the stone just say that? It's not much, not much in there to uh, <laughs> no. extract. No, Raynar said that. I've got an empty head, plenty of room for more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're going to try to attune to it? Yeah. Okay, can you... No, absolutely not. Okay, so you, you sit there for a good 20, 25 minutes, kind of holding it. And um, you start hearing, like, whispers in your brain. Okay. And then the eyes... So there's, like, three notches on the front of it. And then as you're, like, looking at it, studying it, the three notches open to eyes. Okay. And so you kind of, like... You, uh, Lazary and Dalda, you kind of see Bofus, like, looking at it. And then he throws his head back. And just, like, eyes roll back. And so, Bofus, oh. for you, in your head, you see... Dancing, dancing ladies. Okay. Um, you see an audience laughing, clapping, and then you see um, you see uh, like delicious street food. Okay. And popcorn, and okay. then you also uh, hear like whooshing of 
fabric material closing and opening. Okay. And then, uh, and then you, you kind of like feel like this is a reciprocating effect. So if you want to try to ask it something, you think, okay, you might I picture piles and piles of gold. Uh, and it shows you a picture of a giant golden dragon. Okay. Actual dragon. Mm-hmm. And I picture fighting the dragon. Um, it shows you uh, two hands sh- and a handshake. Um, okay. I picture one hand reaching out and it's holding the stone of galore. Um, it's the same picture back to you, but you hear a large crowd, uh, music and people laughing. Okay. All right. I think I'm ready to come out of the attunement. Okay. So you, it it lets you go as soon as your brain's like, oh, I want to get out. Um, the only thing is, can you roll a, uh, wisdom saving throw for me? Fistum. Uh, twelve. One second. One second. I do have. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with the twelve. I'm okay with the twelve. Okay, so you snap back out, and you look down, and you have no idea what you're holding or what just happened. Okay. You nice. don't remember anything. St- uh since the i mean you you don't remember any, anything it just told you mm-hmm. and you, but you remember everything minus the stone ever existing okay. so all your memories just don't have the stone in it okay and i go what'd you see what is this it's the uh stone what would you see what do you mean what did i see well, your eyes went to the back of your head. I'm assuming you just see your brain. You just get a vision or anything? No, I, I just had breakfast, and then we were sitting here talking about how to find the driving's gold. Why are uh, you looking at me funny? Uh, What's going on here? Office, you, you don't remember <laughs> attuning to the stone. How do you attune to a stone? It's just a bit of earth. Hmm. Uh... Reynard, have you ever seen your dad act this way? No, but then again, my dad's a powerful wizard. Um, sure. Seems like on his exit, uh, the spell might have backfired and pulled out his memories instead of taking the other memories with it. Oh, good. Well, they... Someone else give it a try. You're saying uh, me memories are in the stone now, but I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember forgetting anything. Well, that's how forgetting things works. But I'm, but I'm, I'm not even like forgetting remembering. That I just, you know, we were chasing after the kid, and the kanku, and we were like going after the robot guy, and the terrorist, and the weird dungeon. And now we're going after the dragon's gold. I'll ask you this. Why were we chasing after the kid? Because he's a grubby little screed urchin. That's why. (laughs) How do you know? Because he... No, wait a minute. You were chasing after him. I was just following you. Um, Josh, or uh, Daladar, (laughs) can you roll um, a charisma check? Yeah. Um, Uh, Or a persuasion. Sorry, persuasion with advantage. Uh, oh, it only did it once. That's it. Nice. Okay, you're good. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, all I remember last is we were eating breakfast and talking about how to find this gold that this dragon's done hidden and your pop-up has put and stashed somewhere. Let's go. What are we doing? What's the plan? Well, we need, we need to figure out where the 
the horde is. So why don't we just well, give us a stone and we'll try again. Yeah. Okay, you can have the stone, but but in the meantime, Reynar, are any of you, any of you heard of a dragon? If if it's a dragon's horde, then there's got to be a dragon, and you can't really hide a dragon. Any of you heard about a dragon or seen a dragon anywhere? If there's a the dragon involved, uh, I quit. If there's a real dragon. Well, I guess we'll on, be going with Rothak then. <laughs> <laughs> I also quit. <laughs> is, it, is it the DM? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, and then I, yeah, okay, so I hand over the stone to you, to y'all. All right, Lazary, you want to try? Yeah, let me, let me try attuning to it. Okay, so it's, same thing sort of happens to you, Lazary. Head knocks back, except this time you see uh, large doors covered in runes. They're dwarvish runes, but you can't quite make them out. And then there's three large keys hovering in front of it. Uh, do I notice anything about the keys? Like, are uh, they all unique or something? They're just simple brass keys. Okay. Um, I reach out and try to touch the middle key. Uh, so you touch the middle key, and it fades into a lock uh, of of hair. Huh. 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 Uh, I reach out and try to touch the left key. Uh, it fades out and turns into the Celestite Unicorn. Huh. Okay, then I reach out and try to touch the last key. Uh, and it turns into a, a giant cask. A cask? Oh. Like, uh, that holds alcohol. Mm -hmm. Are the doors in front of me still closed? Yes, they're sealed closed. Okay. And so then uh, that fades away. And it kind of like pulls back into um, kind of what I described Bofa seeing is a large, like large crowd of people. You hear like fabric. You hear, uh, you see like dancing people. Um, lots of rush. You smell like sweet food. All sorts of stuff. Um, do I still have? Are the other objects still there? The lock of hair. Uh, no, those. Card, those uh, all. That disappeared when disappeared. it pulled out. Can I kind of maneuver through, walk through, wherever I am? Yeah, so you can kind of like will yourself forward and you go back down. You're like, you seem to be going to some sort of back room to a doorway leading down the stairs that open up to this giant cavern where that back where the door was. Um, and then through the door, you hear like just like deep rumblings. I say out loud, kind of, like, speaking to the stone. Show me where the dragons are. Um, so it kind of zooms through the door, down, and you see huge alcoves full of, one full of uh, thousands and thousands of gold coins, and one full of gems that are, like, dwindling, not many gems left. And then you just see in the center um, a giant golden dragon. Uh, like, actual dragon. Okay, I think that's... I think that's enough information for me. Okay. So you kind of tell that it fades. Uh, and can you make a wisdom saving throw for me? Mm 
Okay, you're fine. You come out of it, and you're uh, looking at uh, oh. Raynar, Bofus, and Daladar. You done talking to the stone, lassie? Oh. Guys, I know where the dragons are. Well, I saw where they are. Okay. They were I... in this... Some sort of building that was in... Uh, you know... Either an alleyway or somewhere where there's a lot of street vendors and dancers. I went through a back room into down into a cavern and saw all the gold and the golden dragon and all these jewels. But I don't know where this is. Do you know what type of building it was? Like what if it was a like a store or anything? Uh it was just some small tucked away building uh ian can you Couldn't... roll uh uh wisdom wisdom or intelligence whichever's higher so, uh check give me a second and just make that face the whole time though <laughs> 12 okay you rem you're you get huge deja vu all of it yeah all of it a circus a circus or a festival or some sort of street fest, the stone was talking to me. I swear to it, it was giving me visions and I was asking it things like, can I be friends with the dragon? And it showed me a handshake. I swear it. There's all sorts of gold down there. I'm telling you, we've just got to go to the circus. Yes. What was Ooh. this about a handshake? We well, can shake hands with the dragon, apparently. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is there any, like... <laughs> Were the people wearing any special clothing at the, these festivals that you guys saw? I, I don't there, know. There were dancers. Um, I saw dancers. I will say uh, people were wearing like, like dressed up for the symphony sort of wear. You mean like the opera? Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Wrong ritzy thing. Right now. Right now. We're looking for a place. It has dancing and singing and festivities, but there's also people dressed up fancy like. Uh, maybe it's the theater? Okay. It's too obvious. What, what's uh, next? I, I, any other options? <laughs> Is there a circus it's, in town? Maybe it's the Vault of Dread. No. Maybe it's the the circus. Yeah, it could be the circus, too. Okay, where's the theater? Yeah. Uh, the theater is in the entertainment district. Okay. Well, I, I hear not. about right. Let's go to the entertainment district and start us sniffing around because it sounds like, between Lazarus visions and mine, it sounds like there's some sort of hidden dragon chamber underneath the theater, and we've got to get there, and we've got to shake hands with this dragon and take its gold. Do you guys think you'd be able yeah. to recognize that building if you we were to walk around? Probably not. I think so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this is a question I mean for the DM. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yes, once yes, we see it. Yes, you think you could. Once we see it. Can't picture it. No, yes. It's a little fuzzy. Trust Lazarus. My memory's a wee bit broken right now. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys head out to. Um, let me actually make sure where it is. You guys head out to the theater that's in a location, and you go there. It doesn't tell me. Okay, so you guys are walking through. Uh, the entertainment ward red light district the red light district um sting is there uh you don't have to put on the red light <clears throat> anyways uh so you come across you uh daladar you're like walking and then all of a sudden you notice bofus and lazary aren't with you because they stopped and they're staring mouth agape at the pink flump theater uh <laughs> There's Love posters outside for uh, Meet the Goodberries and Kiss of the Lamia. I don't, know if, I don't know if these are supposed to be puns, but they that's just here. Um, wow, they like describe what the plays are about. Well, I have a very, a very important question. Oh. What? How do they spell theater? They spell theater the correct way. Got it. R-E. <laughs> you would be wrong. Damn What's it. the difference between those? I think Is it's that... just I think it's just UK, US. 
Oh, is it? I wasn't sure if one of it meant movie theater and the other meant. I just like RE plays. because when I read it, I read it as theater. <laughs> Can we go to the shop, eh? Hey, let's go to the movie theater. <laughs> Sorry. I, I learned the other day that DOST is pronounced dust, not DOST. What's D O S T? Oh, like dost the, thou? Like old timey, like dost thou? It's dust thou. Dust thou. Oh, yeah. I wonder yeah. if that's where dust came from. I'm going to look it up. You go ahead and keep going. <laughs> where does <laughs> dust come from? <laughs> <laughs> no, really. You can look it up. Oxford English Dictionary will tell you the, the etymology of it. Dumbass. It's probably the same Latin word. Uh, while you look that up, I'm going to go urinate because I drank a lot. Before yeah, this. maybe we should take uh, a quick break. Um, we'll be yo, right back, that folks. Ad break. We're going to be looking stuff up. A couple minutes. All right, we're back, folks. Uh, dust is from Germanic origin of the circa 1200s. That's as good as it gets. It also may have some Dutch origins, um, but I, I don't. I don't think it's from Dost. Oh, great. Anyways, um, okay, so we're at the theater. Yes, and we're just waiting for Karen because she's not back. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. my apologies. That's okay. I'm going to look up um, the I will quickly say, in mm -hmm. this breakdown, I made hot sauce, uh, and it is very good. Nice. What do you make it out of? I fermented Fresno and jalapeno oh. peppers for six days, and then I blended them up a bunch with some garlic oil that I made. Ooh. And um, then I strained it because uh, so my, my blender isn't powerful enough to like really make it. What was your excitement about the garlic oil after after you're done? I have oh, OK, excitement. so my blender isn't crazy enough to like really blend all the seeds and everything. So I had to strain it, um, but it still came out really well. My only like thing I need to work out. So the next batch I'm going to do, I'm going to ferment it for two weeks rather than just six days. But the other thing is, uh, it's like super watery. So I oh. want to like. Did you cook it? it? Yeah, you could cook it. Um, That's what yeah. you're supposed to do with most hot sauces is like uh, tear gas or home by yeah. <laughs> yeah. boiling all the water out of it. Karen was also mentioning putting like some pectin in it. And then yeah. uh, also yeah, like some that. xanthan gum to make everything adhere. Anyways, that's my hot sauce story. Uh, Ian, go ahead. Yes, I looked up theater and it's from the latin theatrum or the greek theatron which is spelled t-h-e-a-t-r so i'm inclined to believe t-h-e-a-t-r-e -E is the correct spelling because it's closer to the origin than t-e-r yeah. yeah i agree with you i was just trying to piss you off by saying the other no one was i correct. was saying that i use re because i'm being pretentious oh because you're a yeah, that's true. Yeah, but um, it turns out I'm also right. So, do you know what a do you want a vomitorium is? Yeah. Uh, yeah, isn't that a word word thing? 
So people, historians, or not historians, dumb people thought it was the place in like ancient Rome where they would go throw up after dinner, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. But it's actually the exit to a building was called the vomitorium because it looked like people being vomited out of a building, oh. like the Colosseum or a theater. And I, um, I corrected someone at my old work, uh, who thought they were such a know-it-all yeah. <laughs> and they got so mad they just left. I remember you telling me that. (laughs) That was my favorite thing ever. Because we all hated this person. Anyways, Karen's back. (laughs) You guys are outside the vomitorium to the theater. And you walk up to the box office where there is a tiefling sitting there. You got tickets? Uh, What's the show? Uh, Two devils and a cat. How much is a ticket? Five copper. Yeah, three tickets, please. Thank you. And he rips out right, ticket stubs, pay. hands them to you. Yeah. Clink, clink, clink. All this right. way. And he, he opens the curtain for you. I'll ask him real quick. Have you seen anybody uh, wearing any suspicious attire enter the play? And I'll describe the Zenitharium in the uh, Zenithar or... Yeah, there's two groups to him, and what they look like. Um, he says no. He hasn't seen anyone like that. Okay. You seen no, any... I haven't seen anyone like that. <laughs> you seen any dragons about? Dragons? Don't be stupid. Aye. And who who owns this theater? This theater is owned by, uh, Iocast Delanio. Is he any relation to? Uh, Ember Wild? Is that that goober's name? Never, Never Ember. Ember? Never Ember? Is that his name? The guy that who... piece of crap? No. Oh, okay. Well, okay, I suppose we're good now. And then I, I turn to the others and I say quietly, I say, we wait for the show to start. The candles are out. The light is dark. And then we sneak around. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Um... So yeah, let's okay. go into the show, I guess. So you guys go into the show. Are we supposed to see everything? Well, I guess yes. it's okay. There's there's nothing going on here except you finding this thing. Uh, so you guys go out to the show. Uh, Wait, I don't I don't see the thing on the map. Can you show me where the thing is? The thing? Yeah, the thing. Yeah, you said the thing we're supposed to find. Where is it? Yeah, you'll find yeah. it. Wait, no, we're, you... but yeah, like where? Oh, yeah. I don't, it's in I don't the toilets. See it. yeah, yeah, just put your head in the toilets and yeah, you'll get there. Also, did their vision show them like where in this building it was? Uh, I don't believe no. so. I, I, the one I said to Lazary was going through a back door to okay. get there. Right, so that's so was. So you could kind of keep assume... an eye out for a back door. Um,. So yeah, you guys. Uh, I'll I'll say the show starts and everything, so you kind of have free reign of where you want to look. Let me just uh, tell me, and I'll uh, I'll tell you if you're wrong or right. You know. Well, let's go. Uh, let's go try to find that pesky bathroom that's so hard to locate. I. Let's. Okay, Can I wait. just go back to the tiefling mm-hmm. and ask him where the restroom is? Where's the restroom? Uh, to the, the back. But we don't let customers into it. For but I'm a lady. Employees only. What about for ladies? You're a dwarf. There are no ladies. That's rude. Goodbye. Oh. Pretty rude, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make all my NPCs like they're Mass Effect NPCs. Oh, um, uh, Yeah, can we like, kind of try to sneak down through the crowd and go here? Yes, like this. you did that. Did that. Or all these, just by like briefly checking, I want to see what doors are locked and what doors aren't. So this, As we... the door that is directly in front of you <clears throat> is unlocked. Huh? Why am I with Karen? Okay. And what about this outdoor door? Uh, that door uh, says uh, emergency exit. Alarm will sound. I what? Don't... Those things are never hooked up, right? <laughs> okay, can we go through this door? Yes, you can go through that door. Um, 
what do there's I see? people on the stage and all sorts oh, of stuff. I don't want to be over no here. No one really notice you, notices you guys in the bustle of, like, you kind of just look like crew members. Got it. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. helping out. Can we go back? Um, I'm, I want to look at all these doors real quick and just see if any of them look like... Oh, no, sorry. That's not for me. I'll say this to Lazarus. I'll be like, you saw us going through a door. Do any of these doors look familiar? Uh, sort of. They all kind of look like they're the same. You know, like the same I, same molding. This, and This door looks like a door that you saw in the vision. Oh, yeah. Um, I have a feeling about this door. <laughs> Before we continue, before we continue on, assuming this room looks like what it is, I'm just gonna like recommend we all grab a small bit of like costume thing to make us look like we're part of the play. Hi. Uh, can I grab a, a prop knife? Um, I put on a funny hat. Just, yeah, yeah, replace your real knife with a prop knife, and yeah. then they'll grab the real <laughs> knife for the play, and it'll be funny. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. That's, yeah, that's, I'll do I'm that. Pretty I sure swapped, that happened. I swapped my dagger for the prop dagger. That's a that's a hitman level. <laughs> that's good stuff. Um, um, okay, so you guys swap all your stuff. You kind of you look much more like you're part of the show. Mm-hmm. Nice. Some guy comes by. He goes, "Guys, you're on in five. Come on!" Oh Jesus like, Christ! I've got away. the stage jitters. <laughs> he goes, "Get back to makeup. Get your makeup on." And he like pushes you through that door into the green room. Okay. All right, got it. So the DM pushes us through the door. Then what happens? <laughs> I feel like I'm being railroaded. <laughs> if we can get this done by two, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we're through the magical door. Oh, look at all those dragons. Wow. Um, so you guys are backstage now. Yeah. Do we see anything? We're kind of... I'm, I'm, gonna check I'm under looking the... out for... Yeah. Uh, like any hints or signs of like, um, deja vu. You know, or like a like a secret door. Or something I would say like heading that. down the hallway gives you deja vu. Heading north. Okay. So okay. we're following deja vu. Deja vu. Uh, and it leads you all the way. Like, <clears throat> you get to vu. the end of, end of the hallway, and you notice the the bathroom door. Spark some more imagination. Yo, oh, can, I, can I just say nice. how cool it is that we were all just like moving our characters in a convoy down that hallway? That was the <laughs> coolest thing ever. <laughs> that felt so good. That's the little things. Guys, I think it's this way. Hi. This door looks so familiar. I feel it too. It smells familiar. Oh. <laughs> Mm. I kind of, I kind of knock first just to see if anyone's uh, no, in there. No reply. All right, so I push the door open. Are there four seats? And no dividers, because it's medieval. Squatty potties. It's the theater. You share everything in the theater. Uh, so you see four <laughs> toilets and no dividers in front of you. All right. I like how you sit go... facing each other. <laughs> go look. <laughs> you could face the other way if you really wanted to. Lazarus, these two can't. We found the bathroom. If you need to go real quick. Yeah. Um. So, Lazarus, uh, you notice on inspection that the bathroom, the toilets over here look normal, but the ones over here are just painted to look like there's a hole. So about oh. five inches down, there's just a stack of poo because there's no actual hole. I was gonna say. And you kind of think to yourself, "That's really gross." <laughs> <laughs> and you notice, you notice a hinge. Uh, Underneath. What's All right, underneath? I reach and I pull on the hinge. So you pull the top of the toilet up and the poop falls out uh, onto the floor. Uh, but there's a ladder leading down. It's this way. <gasps> we found it. I'm going to use some chain to lock this door behind us. Okay. It's, it's secured. Lord of the Rings tabletop RPG. What? You think it's any good? I just got like real like Lord of the Rings vibe. I know the um, the miniatures game is pretty good. All right, guys, we're gonna have to wade. We might have to wade through some more poop. Who knows what's down here? Let's do it, boys. Mm. 
You're headed down? Yeah. Bless you, my sweet child. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant okay. to do that into the microphone. Thank you. <laughs> you head down uh, in the ladder and you reach some stairs, which lead down into a cavern, which <gasps> lead to a big old door. <gasps> Look at it. Hello, oh, Lord of the Rings. This is the door. This is the door I saw in the vision. <sighs> Wow. That's the door. From That's the vision. a big door. Look, oh, I'm on the right. Is that the Lazare in the middle? Yeah, yeah that's the Daladar with this glowing staff that we've all known Daladar. to come up. You know, honestly, that, that would that would be closer to Rolthek. It's pretty crazy that you found an image that kind of me almost matches us. Did you draw this, Will? I drew this with so my, good. With so my that's pencil. why you keep pushing off the session for all this prep work. Yeah. yeah. All for this. Just <laughs> yeah. this. Okay. Um. Okay, so you reach the vault door. Vault 101. Does anybody know squiggles? How to read and write them? If only you had a <laughs> dwarvish these memory. Are dwarvish, these are dwarvish ruins. Oh, I th always they're thought you were a literate lazary. Both. <laughs> they're ruins of runes. Uh, no, it's just... No one speaks Dwarvish in this town. Oh, so you do know it. Oh, well, what does it say? Yeah. It says... The... The... Yeah. Yes, and... Three... <laughs> the what? The three... The three... Keys... Keys... Bring them forth. Bring them forth. What three keys? The... I had... I remember now in the vision, there were the three keys, and when I touched them, one turned into the celestial unicorn. One was a lock of hair, and uh, the third one was uh, another thing. <laughs> it was the lock of hair, a cask, and a cask. Cask. A unicorn. Cask. Well, I don't. I think we've got two of those, right? I'm sorry, we've got one of them. Another one we don't have on us. And the third one, I, I guess we'll have to go back to the tavern to get a cask? Did yes. We, yeah. We saw the unicorn? I thought we yeah, gave we it. Yeah, we gave the unicorn to Mert. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Um. I mean, okay. Let's see so, if he wants some, yeah. some gold. So out of character, DM, do we yes. actually have to go get those things? Yes. Can we just come okay. back here and we have them? Because I don't think they're difficult to obtain. It's just. Uh, yeah, if you want to do that. If you guys I are... mean, we could just we can just go to Mert and say, hey, we'll give you 5% of this treasure if you give us the unicorn. Or we could. Well, well yeah, let's have that conversation. Just ask with Mert. him for the. Let's have that conversation yeah. with him. Hello, I'm Mert. Mert. Hey, Mert is the old friend. You remember that unicorn thingy, that stupid little trinket we got you? My most prized possession. Yes, uh, we're going to need it back for a bit. Excuse me. Well, anything for the people who brought it to me. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Mert. Just have it back by six. You, you wouldn't move. happen to have a, a, a cask? Playing around. By the a way, ask of delicious dwarven ale. Yes. Yeah. Why yes? Take this one. Bro, oh, thank you. You know, you, have, uh, you know, you have some very nice hair, Mert. Yes, but, ah, it's, but very it's fond not, of it. It's not quite it's as good as your hair, Lazary. Uh, <laughs> it's not quite as good as Raynar Neverember's specific hair. Yes, I, oh. I believe his <laughs> hair <laughs> might be. It's more. flowing and luscious. And fill with good beans. Yeah. <laughs> I actually prefer playing D and D this way, where we don't have to solve the puzzle. <laughs> the GM just has characters say it to us. <laughs> <laughs> Why that sounds like a man who turns into a dragon. Oh uh, wait, what? Is that what this is? Hmm? Reynard's a dragon? No, his father's Herp. a dragon. His mom's a dragon. Well, is... if his father's a dragon, then he's a dragon. 
Is that how it works? Well, wait, if two dragons have... No, it'd be a dragon and a human. So a dragonborn? Yeah. Is that what is that what Dragonborn actually is? I don't actually know. Sorry, I'm confusing myself because I know in in Witcher, a golden dragon can turn into a human. Yeah, you can do that in D&D oh, too. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking. If it's human form dragon and a human, then they have a halfling leprechaun. Am I? There are there is a race is dra called Dragonborn. Yeah, I know There's that. There's a racist yeah. dragon. I'm just wondering where they. <laughs> I'm going to look it up. What? <laughs> Wait, aren't Dragonborn uh, typically racist? Like, they just trust everybody except for Dragonborn? I thought that was, like, I think like every canon. race in D&D is racist against other races. Yeah. Why are we playing that version of D&D? <laughs> They're fixing all that stuff, apparently. Boom. Do you think they have more... Ah, uh, never mind. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> Wait, so are we heading back to the tavern to to get some of Raynar's hair. You guys are back in the vault door with a lock of Raynar's hair. Yeah. At the How door the hill in the Celestial Sorry. Unicorn. How I already have some Raynar's hair. Make a dragonborn baby. Oh, keep that around? Uh, yeah, oh, I just, no. it's in my journal. Make a dragonborn baby. It's right next to uh, Lazary and Bofus. Huh? What? Okay, wait a minute. I think I figured you, it out. Okay, this is from... How do you D&D... This races is, fornicate. Here we Just go. Here we go. Okay, we're going through it. Folks. Okay, here we go. Dragonborn are shaped by draconic gods or the dragons themselves. Dragonborn originally hatched from dragon eggs as a unique race, combining the best features of dragons and humanoids. So I think dragonborn either come from other dragonborn, or if you're an original dragonborn, then you came from an egg, which means that you came from a female dragon. But if your dragon was your daddy, then maybe you could be born as a not dragonborn because you have to be born of a of a female Hatched. human. But here's the real question: mm -hmm. Do dragons have their eggs fertilized after they're hatched? I don't think so. Like fish. Wait, do they hatch? They're full hard of eggs, grown? though. Yeah, they're hard. Or are they hatched as do a, a baby afterwards. dragonborn? They're, they're hatched as a baby dragonborn. But what I'm saying is if they're hatched, then that means the mom has to be a dragon. But if you have the dad as a dragon, maybe that's where you get human, human dragon. Descendants. Maybe they're like seahorses where the male lays the eggs. Oh, whatever. that's true. That's just stupid. Why don't we just open uh, these doors and find out? <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll open the doors and see a dragon <laughs> laying an egg. Hey, before I forget though, <laughs> serious question. What was that guy's name? Ember Ember Wild? What's his full name? Never Ember. Ember. What's his first name? Raynar. Or no, actually Yeah. Karen, remember you you heard what's how do you actually pronounce his name? Oh, it's not Raynar. Yeah, you keep saying Raynar and it's Raynar? not pronounced that. It's Rainier? Or it's I think it's uh Randall? Yeah. Rainer. Rainer? Rainer. Rene. I forget where we saw that. On on the Wikipedia. Oh, this went to the wrong. Okay, I'm just I looking. I'm looking up the picture of his dad. I mean, the name of his dad. The picture of the name of his dad. Air as an air. If you look up the name, it's he just as an a golden elf. dragon. Renair. I knew it. I knew it. He's a dragon. Spoiler. Off. Ember wild. Okay. Never ember. Never. Two seconds. I gotta set up this next scene. Okay. Sorry. Before I forget. I'm calling it right now. He's a dragon. Never Ember is the dragon. Gosh, darn it. Next. Okay. Sorry. Next. You know we <laughs> got sidetracked, but I'm gonna be honest with you. Entertaining stuff there, folks. This is quality it was. entertainment. Thank you. You know what else is quality yes. entertainment? Oh, thanks, Grunty. Sub sub pixel film. Welcome. I was trying to get something ready to make this next part sound cool, but do you, uh, do you need a little bit of stall time? Uh, I need nine seconds of stall time. So, folks, this is not the end of D and D. Something we got to talk about probably off stream is who's running the next campaign and which campaign it will be. I like doing these pre-mades. I didn't realize there's like. 
10 or 11 5th edition pre-mades already out there. Um, and and a lot. apparently some of them are real good. So uh, I was looking at a lot of like top 10 lists and Waterdeep was like eight or nine on a lot of them. And even though we've been having a lot of fun, I guess there's ones out there that are even better. So we'll just we'll have to figure out when we're coming back, who's running it and what we're running. Yeah, because I um, there's one that is a sequel to this, which is Under Mountain stuff. I, which so I, people said isn't that great. Yeah, because apparently that is just it's it's torchlight. It is an endless dungeon. That's all it is. Yeah. So and that's what just that's just what Under Mountain is. Yeah. Um, I have Curse of Strahd. If we want to do that, um, mm. I have a, I have an Eberron one, and I have the Baldur's Gate one. Okay. But Ghost of, Ghost of Salt Marsh looks pretty cool. That one's supposed to be real good. Yeah. Um, we'll figure it out. Anyways. Yeah. Let's continue. Anyways. Uh, let's continue. So you guys bring the objects to the door. The door makes a nice creaking sound. Oh, yeah, this worked. Uh, and the door creaks open. And you move into the vault of dragon. <gasps> I'm sorry, was that plural? Who would have known it was underneath the poop all along? <laughs> it was right under our noses. I swear. It was under your poop noses the whole time. Wait, mm -hmm. shh, shh. Do you smell that? <laughs> it's, it's an old Gibson family joke. <laughs> Why is it a Gibson family joke? Uh, we were at Walmart one everyone. time. Okay, don't care. You guys are in the vault the of drink. No, no, I want to hear this. We were in the we we were driving to Walmart. It's all five of us in the minivan, and my dad parks the car, and my mom goes, "Wait, wait, 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 Shh. do you guys smell that?" And then it started smelling like farts, and then she was like, she just started laughing because she had farted, <laughs> and she wanted all of us <laughs> to smell it before we got out of the van. <laughs> That's amazing. It's pretty funny. That's a will well, joke. He would do that. It really is. Whoa, 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 also like the shh. You smell yeah. that? Yeah. And there's like a, there's a secondary joke there too, which is that you have to be quiet in order to smell. <laughs> we do. Uh, uh, I don't know if I can tell the story. Never mind. Uh, okay. Let's move on. Talking about the shed out back, Will? Uh, no, I was talking <laughs> about the fish market. Um, uh, the end of the stream, maybe. Yeah. Until the end. Morning, ladies. Uh, entrance <laughs> to the foyer. Here we go. There's a vast chamber. <laughs> there are columns supporting crumbling stone. Uh, all sorts of stuff. Sorry, I was describing the wrong area. <laughs> Anyways, there's a giant door in front of you. Wait, there's another giant door? No, it's the opening door. I forgot to open it. Oh. <laughs> okay, do you guys want to go through the door? Yeah. yeah. Um, we're still waiting on loading, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I see it. Karen sees it. I see the room. I think go ahead. I'll wait for you guys go to ahead. finish loading. No, go okay, ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I'll describe the room at least. Uh, there's three age worn columns supporting crumbling stone bridges 60 feet above your heads. Uh, the ceiling rising up another 20 feet beyond that. So the ceiling is 80 feet above if you do math. Uh, set in the alcoves around this room on the floor you're on are, uh, I believe the number is 12 sets of double doors made of iron. Each door is 10 feet wide, 10 feet high, and embossed with images of dwarf warriors in plate armor. And each door seems to have its own unique set of runes on it. Lazarus, what do these runes say? Uh, would they say, um, they say page unresponsive. Foundry is not working for me. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, just refresh. Refreshing. Is it, is it, do the door say happy, grumpy, mopey? They say 404 error. No. <laughs> uh, no, I'm refreshing. They say... Yeah, what do they say? 
Oh, uh, you gotta go up to the door to read each Oh, I gotta go up? Okay. Well, I can't move yet. Oops, I okay. just selected all of you. That's okay. Uh, Ian, you're still right. loading, right? There we go. Yeah, I'm still loading, but that's fine. No, uh, try, try uh, clicking on the, like, uh, the window, Ian. That, like, I clicked on it and it instantly loaded for me. I was like... Yeah, I think I'm still windows. loading. Yeah. Is this the door here, or I have to walk past all these columns? Uh, so, see, there's... Because I could see all the way down to here. Right, see, so right here's a door. Here's oh, a door. I see, here's I a see. door. Here's a door. Okay, so let me go up to this first one here. Okay, so this first door on it says the words orc. Orc. Okay. What about but this it's one? a picture of a dwarf? Yeah, just the runes say dwarf. 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 <laughs> dwarf. <laughs> dwarf. <laughs> that's new, I'm going to call all orcs dwarfs to me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Elder, we'll change this, that. This In my specific D and D world, they're dorks. dorks. So that door, you can see the word orc, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll this door on. says wealth. Well. Okay. Uh, let's go up to, down this one, down here. Um. This one says song. And this one. This one says luck. Um, Some I will of... also tell you in the center column, um, Deladar, I'm going to say you notice this because of your high passive perception, mm -hmm. but on the center column there is uh, what seems to be a large amount of text written out in Dwarvish runes if you want to get Lazarita, to perhaps, mayhaps translate it for you. Yeah, I'll call her over and say, hey, did you see this? Oh, oh, what does this say? Let's see. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to send, uh, Karen, I'm going to send this to you in Discord. So you can read it. And make, let's, at least for this last episode, make it a little bit more immersive. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yes. <clears throat> this one says Doors abound. Doors all around. Beyond is danger or treasure found. Approach to answer, open to speak. Our greatest love hides what you seek. Hmm. Their A greatest love hides what we seek. Well, of course, wait. Speak the answer. Aren't there? Aren't there more? I I mean, dragons love gold, right? Yeah. Wait, are these dwarves? Or dragons? Oh, good point. Are all the mm -hmm. pictures on the doors the same? Uh, they're not all the same, but they're all of dwarves. Can we get more words? So, like, the one that says wealth, that's a dwarf with money. The one that says orc is a dwarf killing orcs. One that says song, they're dwarves singing. Etc. Et cetera. What's the, uh, right, can where's you... The, where, where's the alcohol one? Yeah, where's, let's get, let's get all the words out there. Yeah, okay. Let's... All right, so, let's go through. Let me. Uh, I'll say Karen translates. Lazary translates all of these, so they should all be in front of. Nice power, kin, beard, laugh. Oh, there's more. We keep walking. Uh, clan, mead, child, rock. Is there anything else in the room I can notice by inspecting around? Um, double check. Uh, nothing. There's just, there are the, I mean, if you look up, it's at those, uh, crumbling bridges. Well, okay. There's the mead one over here. So here's the thing. Lazar is a dwarf. So I almost think she would know this, or at least have a very, very good idea of it. Hmm. Approach the answer open. Well, what we're looking for here is wealth. We're looking for the gold. So let's try this wealth. Well, but but uh, it's not what we want. It's what dwarves treasure the most. Right? What does the riddle say? The end of it? Yeah, what uh, we love our, most. Uh, 
Our greatest love hides what you seek. So I. Uh, it... Yeah, go ahead. I'll say, Karen, you know, dwarves, uh, it's mostly like clans and family and right. all that sort of stuff. But also, I, I mean, saying, I'm not saying you know the answer, but yeah. like, also dwarves love rock and they love wealth and they do love meat. Yeah. So, no, I kind of like the thing that dwarves love the most is themselves and I, our people. That's what I was thinking. Dwarves love themselves and they love the rock and they and love, they wealth love too. their friends. I. There's also a hint of air coming through these doors and uh, not behind any of the others. I also can see that the map uh, is slightly <laughs> grayed out on the side of these doors. <laughs> but I would say since we're all here together, I... we are our own little clan of sorts. I think we should go through this door. I agree. I'm paid to be here. Door opens. Hey. Um, can I, you know, I'm getting a fit, I'm feeling a bit feisty. As we as we go through the clan door before it closes behind us, uh, c can I just do like a mage hand and open up the rock door? Um, yeah, you can cast mage hand. Okay, yeah, so I cast mage hand and it tries to open the rock door. I'm just curious it, what, what would happen. It cannot open it. The mage hand dispels as it when it touches the handle. Oh, okay. Okay, onwards and upwards, I guess. This is an empty room with a staircase. Uh, yes. Empty room, there's just more paintings, pillars, all sorts of stuff. Still think dwarves love beard above all else. We do I... love our beards. What? No, don't play that song. Let's uh let's go. Okay, let stars. me move you guys. Is it the ice cream here. song. Do 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 do. Where's both? Whoa! Where are we going? Oh, you didn't see that. <laughs> see what? <laughs> I just threw Ian. Oh, over. through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Forget everything. What's oh. in this room? Are these the bridges above the room? Um, yeah, those are the bridges above the room. So you guys can move around uh, freely up here. Uh, well, just don't cross the bridges without telling me. Yeah, I'm just going to look for traps as we go. Hmm. Okay, uh, I would these, say... Are these just columns? These little circles? Yeah, those are just columns. Um... Daladar, at the end of this room, you do notice uh, a crack in the wall over here. Is that a doorway? Uh, it, you can feel some air current coming through it. Uh, but as Lazary approaches, it starts to glow and opens into Aye. a small chamber. You're a wizard, Lazary. Ooh. You're a little dwarf. Um, a it's a dust film room has lain untouched to the time of the Delzwoun dwarves, which I assume is old. Green copper urns on platforms overflow with coins, gems, and more. This room holds five copper urns worth 25 gold pieces each. Urn What's number been? one contains five tourmalines, which are 100 gold pieces each. Okay, I'm, I'm writing all this down. You are running mixed in with 200 copper pieces. Okay. Ooh. Urn number two contains a ring of warmth mixed in with 10 ordinary gold rings that are worth 25 gold pieces each. You said 10 gold rings? Yep. Okay. 10 gold And 650 silver pieces also. Okay. Earned number three is Pad High with 250 gold pieces. Okay. Earned number four holds 33 blue quartz gemstones worth 10 gold pieces each. Okay, that's and it. Come on down. Earned number five holds a nine inch tall silver statuette of a dwarf priest of Moradin with amethyst eyes. Worth 250 gold pieces and weighing just under 10 pounds. 
Oh, okay. No. I say, folks, that is it. this is a very nice hoard, but let's leave it here. We'll grab it on the way back. Okay. Fair uh, enough. Okay. So that's kind of all you notice on this side of the bridge. Is... I think we're going to have to cross one of these yeah, bridges. Yeah, can we... Can we get a description of the bridge's condition, like top to bottom? Yes, yeah, so the top bridge is pretty far intact. It, it's a little hairy towards the end there. Um, bridge number two, that middle section's missing. Everything else looks strong. Uh, you're going to have to jump that gap if you're going to make it. And bridge three is kind of the same as bridge number one. It's uh, You don't want to put too much weight on it. I, folks, I don't know what you're thinking, but, um, you know, Daladar, I'm pretty sure you can throw us both across the middle bridge and then just make a nice healthy jump for yourself. What do you think? Looks like, what, five foot gap? Uh, yeah, I, not as strong as you might think I am, but at the same time... Well, you time... give us a boost, you know, we, we get, get a little running start and then I... we, you give us a boost on the last jump. I Launch only weigh... Over. I'm only about 70 pounds right now, including my gear. Alright, I'm willing to try if you, if you guys are. Uh, and maybe, uh, we, yeah. I think we each have some rope. Maybe we can always tie rope off, I, just yeah, in case. First person we'll who goes... To these pillars. Yeah, yeah, first first person goes, they, they take a rope with them, and we can run a rope around. I've got 50 feet of rope, so... That should definitely be enough, especially well, if we combine. Or, you know, now that I think about it, we don't need to make it that complicated. We just tie the rope around a pillar. We leave about, what, five, ten feet of slack. So even if you do fall, you only dangle about five, ten feet, and we pull you back up. Yeah, that works. Okay. So, Bofus, I think you're the lightest. Maybe you go first. Aye. Throw me over. Tie me up and throw me over. So uh, we're tossing yeah. Bofus across this gap. Yes, and yeah. I have I have uh, about a... I'll grab onto the rope and just start spinning with him until we get a pendulum going, and then I'll <laughs> really shock put him across. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just uh, roll a strength check for me. Sure. Perfect. You huck him oh, right that's across. A, that's a nat 20. Nice. And he lands there, perfectly Hi. pirouettes. Hi. And uh, bridge holds. Okay. So, just to say it before, Lazary gets tossed across. I, I'm gonna brace myself as much as I can, so that if she's like starting to like slide off the edge or something, I'm gonna try and grab her. If that makes sense, in case that happens. She's being tossed to you. It, it's yeah, not but that, she's being tossed to my side. Support our weight? Uh, I would say the bridge feels pretty wobbly underneath you, Bofus. Oh. Yeah, maybe Bofus, maybe you go I... keep crossing the bridge. Yeah, okay. why don't we each take our own bridge and see how that works? Oh, yeah, yeah, because the other two are intact. Okay, so I'm going to head all That's the way true. down here where it's okay. basically secured against the wall. Are you going to secure the rope to the wall? There, like there could be oh, like no, a, there, no. I I let go of my rope because basically the rope was just so that if I fall it would catch me. Yeah, it was a safety. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then I take. Yeah, you let go. We pull it back. Tie it around my waist. Mm -hmm. Azri, do you want uh, the upper bridge or the lower bridge? Uh, let me try the lower bridge. Yeah, so we do the same thing, like tie the rope off to this column in case the the bridge breaks, and Daladar can do the same. Yeah. Okay. Tie up. All right, but I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna cross first. You mm -hmm. stay there in case. Yeah, I'll just be over here holding the rope. All right. Okay, uh, Lazarus, you make it all the way to the door. Pretty much fine. Oh, okay. Yep. Um. All right. Uh, Daladar, you get a few steps out, and the whole bridge starts to go. 
how far down is it? It's uh, 60 feet. <gasps> All right, I'm going to start sprinting. I'm going to dash and try to make it to the other side before everything collapses. Okay, give me a acrobatics check. Okay, that sounds good. I'm just, yeah, I'm imagining I'm kind of like jumping from falling stone to falling stone trying to get back up. <laughs> like Legolas? <laughs> I was about to hobby. say. <laughs> oh, boy. I forgot that there were three Hobbit movies. I thought there were two. I completely forgot that there was three. Did you forget how in the Battle of the Five Armies there was a bunch of mountains, even though it's the Lonely Mountain? Yeah. I didn't forget. I I forgot the second movie, basically. I'm actually kind of looking forward to the 4K release of the originals, though. Yeah, as long I, as they fix the color grading. I, they do have the they, extended and the theatrical, but I, they probably won't right. have the extended with fixed color grade. That's my bet. Well, they were saying they recolored it from the negatives with Peter Jackson's supervision. Oh. So, unless he's the idiot, yeah. <laughs> then I, hopefully it's changed. Anyways, um... Josh, I will, uh, uh, Daladar, you do make it to the door. You know, he did make <sighs> all the, three Hobbit movies, though, so maybe he is the idiot. Yeah, but that was after George Lucas syndrome set in. Mm -hmm. Right. After he stopped caring, too. Yeah. That's fair. Okay, sorry. Okay, we're good here. I want to open my door. Yeah, let's all open our doors at the same I opened time. It. Hi. Oh, well, just open the doors at the same time. Have the DM <gasps> describe everything at the same time. Yeah. All right. You're all yeah, dead. <laughs> there <laughs> happy oh, ending i'm out um okay uh i'm doing top to bottom because it's just the way i live my life um door number one behind door number one in v8 it is marked on my map i should have gone the other ways uh in this room Daladar, there's a 10-foot-tall painted statue of an armored male dwarf wielding a battle axe and wearing a mask. It's 20 feet... It's a 20-foot high room. In the statue, set in the floor, is an adamantium trap door with a pull ring along one side. Next, in the center room. Four suits of rusted plate armor sans helmets sized for a dwarf stand in the corners of this 20-foot high room. Each suit is draped in cobwebs. There are dwarvish runes carved onto the far wall. In the center of the room, on the floor, is a painting of a dwarf with closed eyes and a closed mouth. And, uh, Lazary, your room. Uh, Empty. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. The northeast and south walls of this 20-foot high room are adorned with dust-covered frescoes depicting dwarf smiths at work in their forges. There's a large iron anvil uh, atop a raised stone block in the middle of the floor. Both fixtures are draped in cobwebs. Uh, furthermore, um, one of the frescoes has a hammer set into it. Wiel wielded by a smith in the oh. painting. Like a physical hammer? Yeah. Can I go? Uh, can I go forward and try to pull the hammer out? You can go forward and try to pull the hammer out. Okay, I do. Do that. you pull the hammer out? Yes. Okay, so you kind of reach your hand in, you pull the hammer free uh, from the fresco. So I have a hammer now. Yes. Is it just like a, like a, um, it's like, like a, a blacksmith hammer? Blacksmith's hammer. Okay. And there's an anvil in the center of the room. Okay, I strike the anvil with the hammer. Uh, the anvil rings out, and you gain ten temporary hit points. Oh. I hit it again? Can I do that? Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing happens. Okay. Um, Josh, what, uh, La Daladar, what would you like to do? Um, so it's just a statue. So is he standing on this trapdoor, or? Uh, the trapdoor is in front of it. Okay. And is there anything else specific about this statue I can see by walking around it? Um, no, you don't really notice anything. You could do a intelligence check, religion, on the statue to see if you recognize it. Sure. Take a shot in the dark. Um... Dwarves are religious. Dwarfs, dwarf tall. 
Big dwarf. <laughs> Big dwarf. Yeah, I'll try to I'll try to pull open that trap door. Okay, can you make a dexterity saving throw for me? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Sixteen. Um. The so the trap door doesn't move. Uh. And you take. Uh, some damage. Uh, the the eyes light up and fire shoots out of them and hit strikes you. Oh God. Uh, let me just roll this quick. Uh, you take 27 damage. That's a lot. Can Are I you serious? Safe? Are you, like, on fire? I think so. Just for, so I know, is that a fail or a save? That was a fail. Okay. 27. Uh, I have 11. Did we just hear screaming yeah. from the last room? I'm on fire, I'm on fire, I'm on fire, I'm on fire. So wait, you have 11 left, right? Yes. Okay. I went for a second, I thought your total was 11, and I was like, oh. <laughs> Dead. Yeah, so you are, you're on, you, you're not on fire any, like, continue to be on crispy. fire. crispy. But yeah. you're just very crispy. Ow, can I get um, the statue around? Uh, the statue does not budge. Uh, I'm going to stand behind it. Bofus, you do hear screaming from the other room, but in, uh, what would you like to do in your room? Can you describe my room again? Yeah, because you weren't paying attention. Well, yeah, but it's also been a long time, and also I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> there are four suits of rusted plate armor without helmets, uh, sized for a dwarf. Uh, they're in the corners of this 20-foot tall room. Each suit is draped in cobwebs. There are dwarvish runes carved into the far wall. You don't know what the inscription says. Uh, do you, you don't know dwarvish, do you? You know what? Let me double check, but I don't believe so. I do not. And then there's also a painting lying on the center of the floor, like in frame, of a dwarf with closed eyes and closed lips. I close my eyes and I close my mouth. Okay, you do that. Nothing happens. But I solved the puzzle. You did it well. Fair and square. Oh, you're right. Um, okay, okay. I... I'm going to go back out to, like, the landing area, and I want to shout for Lazary. Uh, Lazary, you hear both is shouting for you from the other room. I'm here. Uh, okay, so I'll cross back. I've, I've got some runes here. Um, can I describe them to you? And you tell me what they say? Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Actually, if you want to send me, like, pictures and we could do it in real life, or I could just roll something. Well, we I mean, couldn't I, really do it in real life, though. I only have the translation. I don't know what the runes look like. Okay, what should I... Um, just make up something, and we'll send me the translation. You could send it to me, like, one... One of them looks like, like, like a, a broken a, translation. One of them looks like a crescent moon, but it's been, like, cut in half and tipped over. And the other one is, like, a pitchfork... But it's it's only got one tine, and there's like a double handle to it. Keep describing. Uh, there's another one. It kind of looks like you know how sometimes when you shake somebody's hand, but you miss and you kind of grip their thumb instead of their palm. That's what that one kind of looks like. There's another one that looks like you know how sometimes after a dog has done its business and it comes inside and it finds a rug and it kind of scooches for a bit just to kind of clean itself off. It kind of looks like a dog, like you're looking right at it and it's got its front paws down and its back paws up, and then it's got like a triangle oh, yeah. head. That's, um, that's a hoff, the letter hoff. Hoff, hoff. Okay, and then huff. next next to the hoff is just an O or a zero. It's a uh, I don't know what it is in Dwarven, but it's just a, it's just a bloody circle. Ah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> uh. Mm. Uh. Just so the audience knows, I sent Karen the translation, but I put random letters in uh, yeah, random places. Yeah, it's a little gibberish. Uh. Uh. <laughs> That's great. Mm. Just to make uh. it a little difficult. Mm. <laughs> uh. Oh, oh. 
Uh, hold on. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a secret ever before told will cart he described the last few letters again yeah oh, sorry that's a name uh, karen dumathoines it's the guy's name that's not oh. a complicated word oh 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 a secret never told before will part dumathoines lips a secret never ne before told. A secret what? never before told will part Dumathoin's lips. A secret never before told. Okay. So you have to you have to tell it a secret. Okay. All right. I'll tell it a secret. I'll tell it a secret. Yeah. No. Turn around, Lazary. Turn around. Oh, cover my ears. Cover your ears. Still I'm the screaming from the other room. Mm -hmm. I'm not. My hair is not naturally blonde. I had a warlock. I paid him a spell uh, many years ago to make it blonde. Uh, the the eyes of the painting shoot open, and the lips part, and the the whole frame turns and opens into like a door. Like the painting melts back. Hey right, guys, I found a door. I found a doorway over here. What? I found a door. What? <laughs> Stop. Ah! I hear you from the other room. I, I found a I door. I can't hear you over the screaming. I found and the my door. Your ears are still covered. What's Donadar doing? You figure out your puzzle <laughs> yet? <laughs> I'm gonna get back across. <laughs> uh, we could always throw him some rope. Uh, um, or I could do some uh, magic. There's a creepy statue in here that lit me on fire with his laser eyes. <laughs> there's also a trap door. Maybe tell it a secret. That's never been told before. I hate fire. <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> Is there, so there's nothing else in this room besides the statue and the trap? And like no wall writing or anything? Yeah, there's nothing else. Can I inspect the statue and the trap door? Uh, yeah, the statue, it is fixed into the floor. Uh, there's no like seam or anything. And then the trap door... Looks like just someone glued a piece of wood to the floor and put a ring on it. Oh, good. Okay. Doesn't well, doesn't seem to lead. I think anywhere. it was a trap. It was a trap. Was like a... No, it's a trap door. He said it's a trap door. No, oh, it's a trap. Yeah. Trap door. Yeah, oh. Trap, trap door. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm gonna you... take up some rope. <laughs> That's a penis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take some rope and a grappling hook, and attempt to throw it over uh oh, sideways yeah and just see if i can wrap it around no, that was oh, yeah you can do that yeah uh and then if both of us could like try to loop it around and tie it off to each other so it's like a, a noose around the bridge i got it i got okay. it okay uh give me a a, a throwy check throwy check uh, what would you say? Um, <clears throat> athletics or sure. strength, whatever's same. Same time. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna miss. Ball I just short. throw. I ball up my rope and throw it over the edge <laughs> without tying it off. Yeah, so you have no rope now. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I have rope. Okay. You know what? I can make this jump. Well, okay. Wait, real quick, real quick. I'm looking at him now that I can see him. And he's yes. not in good shape, so I'm just going to cast Healing Word real quick. Oh, thank you. Okay, cast Healing Word on him. Also, Josh, that's about as far as you can go out on this bridge, because it's gone. That, that's fine. To, like, where I am? Yeah. Oh, he's right. That is nine. Try to... Nine hit points? Yeah. That's more than I had. Um, I'm going to try to Prince of Persia this. Are you going to wall run? Yeah. Wait! Lazare, aren't you always trying to make us float on the wall or something? I, uh, yeah, but I have to touch him. Ugh. Why don't you just... Oh, uh, yeah. I have, I have to touch you to cast... Wait, can well, you... actually, I could cast it on myself and then come over there and I... pick you up. It's all these molestation spells. 
I touched yeah. you. <laughs> Pretty sure I can do this, guys. And even if I foul, I think I'll be okay. Oh. 16 ah. feet! Yeah, but I'm a monk. Slow fall. Well, that's true. I mean, I can cast it on myself no matter what to climb over and come over to uh, Bofus. Because these are connected, right? This yeah. Wall? yeah. Um, Column. All right. So Dalador, that. you got that nine points of healing, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. I, just to be clear, I cast that at third level. <laughs> it was still real. Oh, low. no. No, I wanted to give you a bunch of healing, but it's just not a great spell. But I can way. cure your wounds once you come over here. I have to touch Doesn't you. Doesn't someone have too. a healing potion, too? Oh, I've got healing potions. I do. Right. But See? Figured it all, all out. Gonna be okay, uh, do an acrobatics check if you're going to do your run thingy. Yeah, I'll try that. Uh, I'll give you advantage for believing in yourself. I always believe in myself, so I should always have advantage. <laughs> yeah, but I don't always believe in you. Uh, is that one roll or two? Why is it not doing advantage? It's annoying. Oh, don't you have to do like hey. the shift or hold down control? I was okay, doing so you... I was control instead. Why? Well, I think control is disadvantage, shift is advantage, and then you gotta, you gotta click the, the dice icon. Yeah. Oh, uh, it just wasn't working. Let me try. So you expertly run and jump and make it across. Why are you doing an unarmed strike? Well, I, no, I just I'm making sure it works. It works for me. me in the face as I get. And over. you reach, <laughs> you make it over to the other bridge, and you land on the bridge, and you kind of smile at Lazary, and then you realize the bridge is collapsing. Oh, ah, good. Get in. So get both him. of you make a. Uh, uh, let me just double check do here. This. Make me a. Where is it? Uh, a strength saving throw. Strength? I mean, sorry, dexterity. Yay! Oh. Oh. You both fall. <gasps> Yay! Wait, but no, I have still have spider climb. Oh, you're fine then. I'm like, yeah, I'm like stuck to the wall. Wait a still. minute. If she has spider climb, why can't she just like at can, least Can I try to, to grab, grab him as he's falling? Yeah, that's fine. That's the next step. Okay. Now that Daladar can't. Well, actually, spider climb, you're technically stuck to the thing that's falling. That's no, stuck. I was. No, just I... kidding. <laughs> um, so, uh, Karen, give me uh, both of you, uh, Josh and. Josh, do a strength check to try to grab Lazary, and Lazary, do a strength check to try to grab. Um, sorry, dexterity to grab. I do uh, dexterity to grab him. Yeah, are oh. these saving throws or just rolls? Yeah, uh, do saving throws. Okay. Nice. We're matching. <laughs> um. Okay, so <laughs> Lazary, you hang on. <laughs> But Teladar does fall. Um, <laughs> but you have slow fall? Yeah. Okay. So what does that do? Uh, reduces damage from falling by 25. Okay. What? Do you know damage from falling? I don't even know it off the top of my head. Uh, it's like a D6 per 5 feet after 10 or something like that. I don't know. Um, the environment. Okay. It is... Every 10 feet is 1d6 to a maximum of 20d6. Okay, so it's 60 feet, so it's 66. Yep, I should be fine. So, I mean, there's not spikes. I mean, you're just falling into the room you were before. Oh, is this. Oh, we're above, I see. Oh, did you. Did I roll that? Or did you roll that? You, you just rolled roll something. Why does it say your name on it? In the best. Oh, because I have you selected. Uh, so you take seven damage. I take no damage. You take no damage? I said up to Minus, 25. Up to Minus 25 five. damage. Oh. Man, I rolled like crap. It's like a little cat. I rolled three it ones. Lands on his feet. Mm -hmm. I okay. slide it against the wall all the way down. So, yeah. So, uh, you can walk all the way back up if you'd like. I do this. Um, and then now you just so that half of the bridge is collapsed. But this is side's fine. Yeah, that side's fine. 
Oh, but like over here is collapsed, you're saying? Yeah, this whole section up to the door. Alright, I'm just gonna. Two. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, my feet are glued to like the um, wall here right above the door. So, is there like a landing point here I could be on, or is it just. Yeah, so like to... these two here. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna like go prone. And, like shuffle against uh, this. Yeah. So as you start to go out on this bridge, it Being starts very... starts to not oh, really like it at all. Uh, can you run and try to get to the landing? Because then I can always walk back. Yeah, along you the could water. try to do the thing you did on the top bridge. But then I just don't want to break all three bridges permanently, and then be. Well, why don't you guys? Hey, it's sixty feet. Yeah. Dr just drop a rope from where you are, and I'll go back down. No, I can climb. I can walk down the wall and come get you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and make him spider climb. Yeah. Okay. I still yeah. have one more spell slot I can cast. Yeah, I'll just go. I'll go back to the main room. Yeah. Let's let's try then... the rope. The rope. Let's first, just do though. that. But then, yeah, but... if you do the rope, you don't have to wait spell slots. Ah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So let's try the rope first. Okay. So you guys pass down a rope. Um. Uh, since you're both holding it and pulling it up and he's climbing at the same time, I'll say you bring Daladar up to the room. Yeah. And now Yay. you're in this room with a dragon and a, what? Uh, you're in the room through the, the door. Door. The floor door is open. Floor painting door is open. Um, and you're going through it. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, you three descend the spiral stairs into lightness. Although deep underground, this vault is lit by streams of sunlight that pour down from the ceiling, catching motes of dust in their luminous pools. Ornate columns support 30-foot-high vaulted ceilings, which is adorned with carvings of dwarves basking in the presence of their gods. Deep alcoves line the walls, and piled on one of them is a vast golden tro trove. Out of the dusty gloom steps an aged dwarf clutching a staff carved and painted to resemble a pair of entwined dragons. One red, one gold. Despite the dwarf's age, his eyes are steady and bright. I wasn't expecting anyone, he says plainly. As you can see, the place is a mess. Perhaps you should come back later after I've tidied up a bit. Oh, could I have grabbed that healing potion too? Yes. Oh yeah, I gave him one of my potions. Um, uh, what does it say on it? I think it's two D four plus two. Uh, it says two D. Yeah, two D four plus two. So I give you one. Hello, old friend. Who are you, and why are you here? We are friends of the Never Embers, and we're here to retrieve uh, their gold. They've asked us to retrieve it for them. Raynar Neverember in particular sent us. Raynar? And why isn't he here with you? Well, uh, quite frankly, uh, Raynar's more of a pretty boy than he is an adventurer. He knew the going may be tough, and so he hired us to go uh, grab his things for him. What you say does make sense, but how do I know you're not... You didn't kill him, and you're coming here to steal his father's gold. You know Reynar. Reynar may be a pretty boy, but he's very strong. First of all, he would never give up his father's gold, and he, he certainly wouldn't do it before dying. So if we did kill him, we wouldn't have known where it was. Can I roll persuasion? Uh, you can. Fourteen. Yes, that does make sense. But how do I know that Reynar is even supposed to get this gold. Lord Dagult told me that only those he gives uh, appoint vassals are allowed to retrieve the gold from his chambers. Aye, by vassal you mean like someone holding this? And we pull out the uh, a stone of galore? Yeah, nailed it. His eyes wide and he says, I see. Then follow me. <laughs> okay. So he leads you uh there's a giant alcove, uh, and he says, choose 
one al one uh actually no that's not right sorry there's two alcoves pile of one is five hundred thousand gold pieces oh, uh Jesus. the combined yeah. weight which is ten thousand pounds okay and let's get on the floor in the second alcove are 65 gemstones um and the old man says this is the trove of Dagult never ember the gems are my food supply and this staff is also mine, but everything else is Lord Dagult's. Take what you can. I, I'm okay with that. Are you, are you both okay with that? Yep. So it's just the no. gold there. Although that's not the staff or the uh, gems. Yeah, gold. Uh, we might have to take a couple, make a couple trips. Well, okay, but uh, we wouldn't happen to have a bag of holding on us, would we? A bag of what? A bag of holding hold on it? Does he still get There's weight with the bag pounds of holding? It. Yeah. It's only 500 pounds for well, a bag of holding. Okay, here's my question. How much does a bag of holding roughly cost? 500 gold, I think. <laughs> how, how many pounds is uh, the... Is it 10,000 10, pounds? 10,000 pounds? So it's 20 yeah. bags of holding... Which is 10,000 gold. And how much gold is it total, you said? Uh, 500,000. So we would basically be taking out net total, net profit is 490,000. Yeah. Sounds reasonable, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm more concerned that if we pop out of this theater. We can pop out of this theater once to get some bag of holding and come back. My concern is if we pop out of this theater and we bring a whole army down here to carry it off with us, we can't trust them. We can't trust the city to keep quiet mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, I think a bag of holdings are the way to go. It's just how we're finding kind of, well, I guess we're in a city and they're a pretty common item. Hey, it may just take us a while. What do, DM, how you feel about this? Uh, yeah, uh, you guys... You're trying to well. I will just say, leaving with that large amount of gold, it's going to be hard to do without without bags of holding. Yeah, or casting suspicion. Or, yeah. So or having people see you. Tell you what, I'll hang out here with the dragon and just keep guard. And then if you guys want to go and buy or take oh, ten thousand gold. Sorry, give me a second. I ask him if you don't mind me asking. How was all of this gold brought in here and the place still kept a secret? Um, Let's use that method in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of this gold was teleported here uh, before the spells were sealed this place up. Do you know of an easy way to get things in and out of here? Um... Other than carrying it, not really, no. Okay, let me ask the DM a question. How much does it cost to buy a theater? Maybe like 500,000 gold pieces? Really? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> what? No, you could probably buy it for like 10,000. That's better oh, than the gold bag pieces of holding. Is a lot. That's that is better. a lot. That's better than the bag of holding, though, is that we just buy the theater. Yeah. Let's, let's, wait, how much gold? Okay, wait, so I'm gonna count up the gold real quick that we would have gotten from the other room. Okay, it's like. It's like 2% gold of our gold to own the theater. Uh, how do I update my character? I don't see the D&D Beyond symbol anywhere. We, we I have like, um, we've got updated. like over 1500 gold that we can grab from that other room. Sorry, what were you asking, uh, Karen? For some reason, it's not letting me update my character in Foundry, even though it's update. Oh. Like, I don't see the D&D Beyond symbol. Well, can you, you can, can, can you roll dice? Yeah, I can roll, but I just realized that some of the... Well, I just, the, I, uh, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't update my character at all in Foundry, because everything's being rolled from Beyond. Yeah, so. I just use Beyond now, too. Mm. I will say that you guys successfully retrieve the gold 
in some and manner. by the theater. I yeah, want to buy the, the theater. theater. We don't need to retrieve the gold. We can just keep it here. From yeah, here. Uh, what you do with uh, Mystery Dwarf Man <clears throat> will be discovered someday in the annals of time. Um, oh, he's, he's our guard. I will say uh, you guys are free to retire. It's a lot of money. Wait, excuse me, real quick. Excuse me, William. Yes. Excuse me. That is 171,670 gold pieces each. So add that. That's important. I'm going to add that right now. So it's 171,667. Again, I get paid hourly. No, you get a you get. You, well, that goes to that goes to Rolthek, right? So Rolthek gets a bunch of it. Are you really paid hourly? Wait, I thought that's you were, just gold. I thought you, yeah, that's gold pieces. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I get paid hourly, but at the same time, I accept bonuses. One seven oh, okay. one. For some reason six, I thought it was seven. One seven one six six seven. Yeah, I thought for some reason I thought you were getting half of what Rolthek got. Um, that's probably accurate. Yeah, I would say my like Rolthek. The share goes to Rolfek, and then he pays me. Yeah. Okay, we're rich. Yay! Yay. You guys did it. Oh. We, do you think we would have beaten that dragon? No, absolutely not. Tell okay, me about okay, the dragon, no. though. Because... Uh, I will tell you about the heading of uh, underneath adventure conclusion, dying in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> In which it says, although the main characters should probably just leave if the dragon doesn't give them the money, if they succumb in the process, they succeed in keeping the gold out of the villain's clutches. A bittersweet victory indeed. Wow. We could have yeah. beaten the dragon. Um, yeah, that was um, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. I, I liked it as far as coming from the DM. They just structured it weird. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, can, I, I can tell you we're struggling do. a bit. Like the whole chapter two, when you guys get Troll Skull Alley, there's like you're supposed to do sessions of you guys doing missions for each of the um, clans and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's just so boring. Right. And then there's like six yeah. chapters here devoted to uh, going to that the villain's lair and claiming things, but if things don't play out that way, you never get to do any of it. Mm. Like there's a whole submarine. But it's just like the wrong season, so I liked it, but it's kind of stupid. Um, yeah, I think we had a lot of fun. So, like we discussed, submarine. Oh, look at that! Like we discussed a little bit earlier, uh, we will be running a new campaign at some point in the future. We're not sure who's going to host. We're not sure what module we're going to run. We're going to discuss that. If you enjoyed this, you should definitely follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitch at Subpixel Team. Uh, you can find out new content that's coming out, new streams that are coming up, and find out first on Twitter when our new D&D campaign is going live. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out subpixelfilms.com. That's going to be an archive of this stream, all of our other streams, as well as edited videos, including some brand new content coming out tomorrow about the Lego Universe MMORPG that unfortunately was a failure, but had some very interesting phallic stories behind the development of it. It's a lot of great stuff on Subpixel. And you know what? If you don't care about Subpixel, you got to care about us individually. Josh, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me here, as always. Um, I'm looking forward to some more D&D &D sessions. But other than that, uh, don't really... No, nowhere else, really. Just just no Pixel. Got it. Uh, Karen, where can people find you? And are you f looking forward to more D&D? Uh, you can find me here on occasion, especially uh, I'll be making some uh, special appearances on Extra Life Ooh. Uh, coming up soon. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I think this was a really good, um, you know, like strong campaign. Um, and definitely like I am looking forward to some more D&D &D here and there, even if it's just like a, you know, a one shot here and there. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. Awesome. And Will, where can people find you? And are you looking forward to potentially playing on the other side of the DM screen? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. And yes, uh, resurrecting Kelzor Loden, the gnome wizard, 
mm-hmm. who is just the greatest war criminal. Um, <laughs> might, might be a war criminal. Oh, um, who who decided randomly when to give people feather fall if he thought they deserved it. <laughs> Most didn't. <laughs> Most didn't. <laughs> Most uh, but yes, I'm looking forward to possibly being a player again. All right, that's great. And you can find us, you can find me on Twitter at Think Gibson, and I'm absolutely looking forward to. And you know, maybe maybe I'll step into that DM role. Who knows? Lots of fun. God, I love D and D, and we're gonna have more of it soon for you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye.